Okay, so I guess before we start the recap interview proper, we're going to have to touch on the elephant in the room here, which is that, of course, the news is broken that AEW has fired CM Punk. Um, if you don't know, uh, at All In last weekend, he and Jack Perry got into a heated conversation backstage uh, just before Punk's match with Samoa Joe. Uh, apparently a big fight broke out. Um, Tony Khan has said that he actually feared for his personal safety for the first time ever at a wrestling event. So, yeah, uh, apparently, yeah, this was uh, really bad. A uh, lot worse than maybe was even initially reported. Um, yeah, look, it stinks. It's not like I necessarily wanted something like this to happen, but at the same time, I thought, this could happen again. After Brawl Out last year, it's like, you know, he, Punk just did everything he could to try to make himself look like the good guy when it's like, you're, even if you may think you're the good guy in all this, you're not. You know, you went into business for your own because some guy criticized you over Colt Cabana, which, again, you went into your own business there. Uh, you know, you called up the executive producers, of the, yeah, the exe yeah, company executives, you know, with no, you know, exactly, you called out, you know, one of their friends as well. <clears throat> you know, you just you know, ran everything down and then, you know, you tried again multiple times to try to play it off like you're the victim in this case, you're not. And you still got rewarded, you got your own television show out of it. And now, you know, then you you pull the thing with Hangman Page again last week, and now this. You're like, you know, it just, I sensed, like, this was maybe not going to go well. You know, just, unless he showed up and really showed some contrition at some point. You know, even backstage. Even if he goes out on the mic, you know, on TV, and, you know, does a spiel, okay. But, you know, at least try to do something in the back. But it's like... He just kept blown, yeah, just blown chance after blown chance after blown chance, and uh, you know ultimately this, uh, you know this blew things over. Um, as for what happens with Collision, I don't know. I mean, Collision's ratings were really good, but you know they struggled whenever they were opposite a WWE show like they were tonight, and they also, you know, also you know they're now opposite college football as well, which. Yeah, you know, it's going to get higher ratings no matter what. So, it's probably going to affect the rate. It was the ratings were going to drop either way. It's, even if this was, you know, a go home show for All Out. Yeah, they held a pay per view after a week after a pay per view, a week after a pay per view. So, um, it's just again, it really puts me on edge because it just gives the impression again that the the inmates are kind of running the asylum a little bit. Where, you know, I think Tony Khan. Is a decent guy. He works really hard, but sometimes maybe he tries to be a little too uh, pleasing to everyone, and that's where it kind of comes back to bite him. So, yeah, it's like it's not good. Hopefully, they can rebound from this. Uh, you know, they uh, hopefully there's some strong locker room leaders that people really can turn to in there. They can settle this down, and they can square things away, and still put on good wrestling shows and stabilize everything. Like, I think you could take Collision and you could build it around a Ricky Starks or a Powerhouse Hobbs or, you know, Andrade El Idolo or, you know, anyone and it'll work fine. So, again, I, I don't think we're going to be completely into where it's, you know, down in Rampage territory, but, yeah, it's going to be uh, very touch and go for the next few weeks. <sighs> Okay, um, now that that's out of the way, uh, let's get to WWE Payback uh, 2023. Uh, the show wrapped up about uh, almost 20 minutes or so ago. Um, so, yeah, again, no kickoff show matches. So I can uh, give that nice little spiel about Punk, but uh, let's move on. Uh, we started the show off with a steel cage match between Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. I uh, couldn't help but notice both women were wearing kind of similar outfits, where it's the black leather with the flesh tone patches all over them. I don't know what they did that. 
uh, early on, uh, Lynch hit uh, multiple exploders, uh, stress, uh, tripped Lynch on the turnbuckle, and then began throwing her off the cage. Both women threw each other off the cage repeatedly. At one point, both women were banging their heads off the cage to the point that uh, uh, Trish Stratus got a very nice little, what we call a goose egg on the forehead. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, Stratos uh, hit a widow's peak at one point. Lynch hit a leg drop off the cage. Lynch uh, countered um, a Stratus faction into a twist of fate. Uh, at another point, um, Trish got a cheap shot on Becky's knee and then hit the Stratus faction with really a two count. Uh, the big climax of the match was just as they were fighting on top of the cage and getting out, uh, Zoe Stark came down to the ring. Uh, when Trish tried to sneak out through the door at one point, uh, she tried to help, but then uh, Becky caught her. Stark slammed the cage door off of uh, Becky's face. They uh, fought a little bit. It looks like the, you know, at which point Stark entered the cage uh, and fought with Lynch, which was supposed to help Trish escape. But Lynch managed to get a manhandle slam on Stark and then come in and hit a manhandle slam off of the cage to get the three count of the victory to defeat uh, Trish Stratus. Overall, uh, this was a very good match. Uh, really entertaining bits. Uh, you know, kind of expected the interference a little bit, so, you know, I was waiting for that to happen. I think it had played right. Ultimately, I think it was best that Becky won. Like, Trish isn't going to be a full timer again. You know, she could take a bit of a break unless we go by what happened after the match, which is afterwards, uh, Stratus lit up uh, Zoe Stark, uh, yelled at her, shoved her, slapped her, and Stark responded by hitting the Z60. So it uh, looks like they broke that couple up, uh, which again does bring in some interesting ideas. I wonder if they maybe jumped the gun on this a little bit. Uh, you know, maybe have uh, Trish browbeat Zoe a little bit longer, but uh, again, you got the big moment. Uh, I just hope now this actually moves Zoe Stark onto something else and she doesn't just vanish like so many other women have uh, over the past year. Okay, so after that uh, we have uh, John Cena come out because he's a host of Payback. He says he like, I'm especially, uh, like, hey, I know, I, I'm kind of nervous. I've never been a host for one of these things before. I don't know what to do, but I do know I could do one thing. I could make this thing special. Like, how about I be the special guest referee for the next match, The Miz versus L.A. Knight? Uh, at which point, uh, Miz came out and accused Cena of pandering. You know, that's not the John Cena that calls himself the GOAT. Cena explains that, you know, while he doesn't like Miz, he does respect him and just needs a little bit of advice. Uh, Miz says, you know, don't get involved, you know, do this, uh, take charge, you know, dress appropriately. And so Cena grabbed her shirt and he said, okay, well, like I said, I made myself a special guest referee, so I am taking charge of the situation. Uh, at this point, LA Knight came out. Uh, the match pretty much went uh, right off the bat. Um, Miz tried to roll out of the ring and powder, but LA Knight caught him off, threw back into the ring. Uh, Knight came back at a power slam. Mitch, uh, Miz um, dodged a knee strike uh, into the announce table. And uh, Knight came back with a flying clothesline off the barricade. Uh, at which point, uh, the men got in the ring and they were fighting and they would get to the rope break parts. And Cena would start the five count and he got angry and fought with both men. At one point, Miz tried to roll up Knight while he was arguing with Cena. Uh, Miz did hit a double DDT. Knight came back, hit a uh, swinging DDT off of the ropes, off the second rope to be more precise. Uh, Miz tried to use the ropes for a leverage pin, again got into an argument with Cena. Uh, dodged uh, the BT, uh, or the BFT and hit the skull crushing finale. Uh, but only got a two count. Miz uh, tried to go in for another set of kicks, but Knight uh, fought out and hit the... Uh, no, um, Miz tried to do the five knuckle shuffle uh, LA Knight came back, hit the, I guess, LA elbow, I don't know. Um, uh, and then the blood force trauma for the three count and the victory. Afterwards, uh, Cena acknowledged that LA Knight's, you know, on his way up in the world, and Knight reluctantly sh uh, shook Cena's hand. Um, so, I don't know why they did that, but, uh, like, you think you would be a bit, just a little bit more open to, I don't know, say, 
uh, <laughs> you know, uh, taking the shot, rub from John Cena there, but anyway, uh, overall the match was fine. There's some good shtick in there. I did like that Cena did his best to not actually get involved in the match, uh, and it wasn't just him arguing with Miz the whole time. So there, there were some nice parts, but other than that, the match itself is kind of blah. And that leads us into the third match, the United States Championship match, Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory. Uh, the LWO come in, came out in PWO t-shirts, Pittsburgh World Order. Um, Theory uh, clotheslined Rey, it got a cheap shot at some point to Rey in the throat, uh, hit a big lariat. Uh, Theory hit a kind of deadlift uh, fisherman suplex. Uh, he then tried to rip off Ray's mask. Ray came back in a moonsault, hit kind of a springboard head scissors. Uh, Theory dodged a 619, but then Ray hit and hit a kind of torture rack into a powerbomb maneuver. Uh, Ray countered an eight town down, hit a drop kick. He hit the 619. Uh, he went for the uh, the splash, but uh, Theory got his knees up. And Theory gets ready for the eight town down, but Mysterio counters into a roll up for the three count of the victory. Yeah, this match was kind of forgettable. I mean, obviously they're setting up for uh, at least uh, Escobar to turn on Ray at some point. But yeah, they're not quite ready to pull the trigger just yet. And it's like, okay, so what happens with Theory now? Because he's on SmackDown and there's not really a lot of room for any type of push. Uh, unless he starts getting into a faction to feud with the LWO. So... Uh, something like that's probably got to happen for anything else to really progress the storyline. Okay, our next match is the Pittsburgh Street Fight for the Unified Tag Team Championships, I think, or Undisputed Tag Team Championships. Uh, anyway, it's uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn against Finn Balor and Damian Priest of Judgment Day. Um, this is all tornado rules, so it's, like I said, it's a big fight, so... Um, Zayn got a, a squared off with Balor a little bit, uh, threw some chairs in the ring, tried to do a torpe, but uh, Balor caught him with a kendo stick. Uh, Balor then tried to get something off from under the ring and instead pulled out some terrible towels, the uh, trademark um, cheering item of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he began stomping on them, which even upset Corey Graves. Um, uh, Zayn came back, hit a plunge on both Priest and Balor. Zayn and Owens then attacked with trash cans. At one point, placing Finn Balor in a trash can and basically uh, hitting him with kendo sticks to the point they even sandwiched him with them. Uh, they fought into the crowd. Uh, Dominic uh, Mysterio got involved, uh, attacked, and um, seemed to have knocked out... Um, Owens and Zayn, however, as Balor began charting instructions to get them back in the ring, uh, they popped out of the penalty box in full hockey pads um, and attacked with weapons. They drove Dominic off. They got back into the ring again. Uh, Zayn hit a blue thunder bomb on a pile of chairs on Balor. Uh, Priest then came back and hit um, his Falcon Arrow finisher on Zayn on a pile of chairs. Uh, Dominic, they fought to the crowd again where Dominic attacked. Again, this led to uh, Owens fighting back, putting Domin uh, Dominic on a table, and hitting a swanton uh, Jeff Hardy style from uh, the little top uh, level security area. At which point they fought back into the ring again. Uh, Priest broke up at a little kick with a trash can. Uh, they tried to do basically a razor's edge into a coup de gras. But, uh, I think, uh, no, uh, Zane fought back, tripped Balor up, and sent him through a table. Uh, at this point, Rhea Ripley came down and speared Kevin Owens through the ring barricade. Uh, Zane hit a big maneuver on uh, Priest, got the cover, only for J.D. McDonough to hit the ring and break up the pinfall. Uh, still, though, they fought on. Uh, again, um, Priest hits, or um, Zane hits... Uh, Zane dodged a coup de gras, hit the exploder in the corner, followed that up with a huluva kick, covered, but Dominic hit the ring again, this time with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Basically did a, a flying maneuver from the top rope to hit Zane uh, in the back. Anyway, uh, Dominic hit a uh, top rope maneuver and he hit uh, Zane with the briefcase. 
which knocked him out enough for Balor to uh, get an arm over him for the three count of the victory. Judgment Day are now the tag team champions. Uh, this match was fun. Uh, this, had, this had all the drama, all the good stuff. Uh, well done street fight. Uh, they used weapons right. They fought into the crowd at just the right points. I love the fact that Dominic kept getting knocked out, kept still interfering. Um, I don't know what, what they're going to do with J.D. McDonough. It does appear like he's going to be full on in Judgment Day pretty soon here. Uh, but yeah, it seems like, again, everything's all right. In fact, in a later interview, uh, because John Cena decided to face himself a backstage interviewer, um, he, uh, yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, yeah, John Cena fancies himself with the new backstage area. Uh, they said, you know, families fight, you know, championships are forever. We're going to, you know, we're still dominant. We're still monsters around here. And, you know, like I said, they are finally looking like a dominant faction in this thing. So, yeah, overall, this was really enjoyable. Um, I, yeah, I think I may have mis I don't think I misplaced anything here. Um, I think after this was the, uh, the Grayson Waller effect with Cody Rhodes. Uh, Cody came out, he said, hey, you know, well, I, you know, watch SmackDown, you watch SmackDown, and, well, I was like, well, I watch what I'm on, but, you know, other than that, not so much. Well, you know, I've been watching, and I studied everything, so I saw one thing that I could, thought I could maybe exploit, so I'm putting all my chips on the table, and I've arranged for Jey Uso to be transferred over to the Raw roster. Uh, so, yes, Jey Uso is back, uh, he comes down to the ring. Uh, Waller says, well, you know, that's great and all, but your main event, Jey Uso, what have you won exactly? And uh, Jey super kicks him. Uh, but, yeah, so I do think this is overall a good idea. Get Jey and Jimmy on separate brands so that way they don't interact with each other right away and that way we can build to their matchup at WrestleMania because that's really where I think a matchup like that should happen. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I think this that's going to help in the long run. Though Cody doesn't seem entirely trusting of Jay initially, he he's always like, I hope I haven't made a mistake, but I do think this is going to pay off. And I wonder if this is going to be some type of exploit thing where it's like, okay, I have arranged for Jay to cross over, which means I can you know cross over before the Rumble or something like that. So you know when he, so that way he can face Roman Reigns again in Mania because that's what they're probably building to. Anyway, uh, our next match after that was the Women's World Championship match. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez. Uh, basically, this I don't know what the female equivalent of a hospital necessarily is, but that's really what this was. Like Both women were shrugging off uh, shoulder block attacks. Eventually, Ripley uh, got hit hard enough that she rolled out of the ring and tried to powder. Uh, Rodriguez came back, hit a lariat, and followed with a big body slam. Ripley then hit a big uh, drop kick, uh, completely uh, drilled uh, Rodriguez with it. Uh, Ripley came back in an abdominal claw, uh, and then uh, maneuvered uh, Rodriguez into a point where she could kick the rope up into uh, Rodriguez's throat. Uh, Rodriguez came back in a big power lay slam, uh, hit the corner, corner splash, uh, at which point Ripley managed to get a cheap shot to Rodriguez's knee. Uh, both women like just beat each other really physical. Rodriguez had come back at uh, a stampede slam, uh, tried to go for a power slam, and I did manage to power bomb Ripley into uh, the ring barricade. Uh, but then Dominic uh, again runs down the ring and provides just enough interference uh, to for uh, Raquel to get caught in the riptide uh, for the three count and the victory. Uh, Overall, this was an all right match. Like I said, I do like a good Haas match. Like I said, even if it's a female equivalent of a Haas match, but uh, this one I think had a few too many dead spots in it for me. Uh, I think they went a little too early into selling the injuries because, you know, it just became kind of, you know, cheap shot, cheap shot, cheap shot. Like maybe they could have built the drama up a little bit more. I just, I think this was just lacking a little bit. Okay, and that leads us into our main event, the World Championship match, Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This is the first time Nakamura has main evented a premium live event, a main roster one, I guess. I mean, obviously, a main event in an NXT, but yeah. And it's like, wow, I hadn't thought of that, but they're right. I mean, he won the Rumble, but he wasn't a main event in WrestleMania that year. You know, 
he faced Jinder Mahal, but that was not, you know, again, in the main event. I don't think, yeah, he, so yeah. Anyway, um, right off the bat, Nakamura pushed Rollins up against the ropes and uh, taunted him by rubbing uh, Rollins' injured back. Rollins came back, hit his torque base with a Cito. Nakamura came back with a big backdrop. Rollins dodged a flying knee and then hit uh, Bulldog into the ropes. Nakamura, uh, they fought to the outside. Uh, Rollins tried to do a stomp from the barricade to the ring, uh, to the announce table, but Nakamura got him in a gorilla press slam and tossed him on top of it. Uh, Rollins basically landed on their little uh, tablet monitors they have uh, on the announce table, so that probably aggravated his back a little bit. Uh, Nakamura hit an STO backbreaker. Uh, Rollins fought back. He hit a top rope Frankensteiner. He couldn't do his Falcon Arrow thing, so uh, Nakamura avoided a stomp, hit a flying knee. Uh, Nakamura hit a snap German suplex from the second rope. Rollins countered a Kinshasa with a super kick. Uh, however, um, Nakamura countered another move with a Kinshasa of his own. Rollins did come back in a big hand Zaguri. Nakamura hit a Michinoku driver from the second rope. Uh, at which point uh, Rollins came back, he had a big pedigree. Uh, he then tried to go for the stomp, Nakamura countered it into a roll-up attempt, but then uh, Rollins rolled out of that and hit the stomp for the three count and the victory. Um, overall, this was a fun match. Uh, I think they did a good job telling the story. Um, I guess it makes sense the Priest wouldn't cash in at the end of this because, uh, <laughs> again, um, you know, he just competed in the street fight, so he, yeah, you could just play like he might be justifiably tired, so you're probably not going to see him capitalize on it. But uh, it definitely helps build this Nakamura feud up to be a bit more. Um, Nakamura looks increasingly more like a threat. He could possibly win if they have if they uh, wind up facing a fast lane in October. So overall, is all right. You know, I do think it could have been better. There's some room for improvement. Uh, you know, maybe, again, try to lay off a lot of the Nakamura-ism sometimes. Like, you know, he doesn't need to do the come on thing every time. It's just, you know, it's like he's still trying to, like, I don't know, it's not like he's trying, I guess. You know, but he's still doing a lot of the baby face twerks that he really shouldn't be doing in that. But other than that, again, overall, it was a fine match. And, again, the uh, overall thoughts on the show, again, I thought it was a very solid show. Uh, you know, the only one I thought was a real any bit of clunker was that, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, the United States Championship match. I do think they could have done something more with that. Or again, you know, maybe do, done, you know, uh, Volter and um, Chad Gable or something. Uh, just, you know, maybe mix a match. You know, maybe do one more match on top of this. I think the show itself was a little short. But other than that, like I said, it's not terrible. It was actually pretty enjoyable. So, uh, definitely an upgrade from SummerSlam. I'm going to be giving WWE Payback 2023 a B. Like I said, room for improvement, but still overall solidly enjoyable. Um, a lot of fun. So, okay. Uh, next video is probably going to be uh, the recap for Episodes 3 and 4 of Ahsoka. Uh, and then uh, the Madden Week 1 preview. Um, like I said, next wrestling is... It's going to be fast. It's pretty much going to be WWE from here on out. Um, again, money's tightening up, so sorry. Uh, you know, maybe if something wants my way, I can, you know, do another show, but hopefully I can do that then. Um, and, uh, yeah, so um, my house sitting comes up in mid-September, but I still don't know when just yet. But, yeah, it is going to be coming up at least within the next couple of weeks. <sighs> See you all next time. Hey guys, remember you can help me maintain and possibly even expand my professional wrestling coverage by supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for camp productions. Also, remember to like the video, comment, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.